So a lot of people seem to ask me like very quickly when they learn how to sell books online and it's like, well, what about Gaylords? What about bulk? <clears throat> I can pull just as much out of this book section as I can a Gaylord. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna spend, let's say you spend $100 on a Gaylord, right? You might be able to get them cheaper. You might be able to get them for twice that. But the fact of the matter is, we call it a thousand books for nice round numbers. 10% of those books in that Gaylord are worth selling. So you're gonna spend $100 on a Gaylord to get 100 books. But then you have 900 books that you can't do anything with. So how do you monetize those? The better you can monetize those, the more money you'll make off that bulk project, right? So the, the riches are in the niches, they always are. But I would rather just go to the local Goodwill or local Salvation Army, a local mom and pop thrift store and scan those shelves and pick up only the books that I know I want to sell. I get to scan them, I get to look at them. I can probably get backroom access at a lot of these places. A lot of our sources give us that backroom access. But what you can do is now you pick and choose, right? So now you get to say, these are the books that I want. I don't want to buy all of them. I just want to buy these right here because I know that they're worth money. So you have to weigh that option, right? If do you need to go into bulk? Is it too competitive? Is it something else? Is it something in the environment, right? Is it just that you don't like hanging out in a dirty Goodwill or an outlet because you can't stand the germs or COVID or maybe you're a higher risk? But weigh those options because you don't necessarily have to go into bulk. You don't necessarily have to buy a Gaylord to make money in this business. Your first hurdle is finding out where books are. Your second hurdle is generally gonna be, how do I get these books into Amazon in an efficient manner? In other words, how can I get them from the store to my house and then into an Amazon fulfillment center as quickly as I possibly can so that I can think, I can make the money that I can realize, you know? So when I scan a book with Scout IQ, it says, hey, it's $12 profit. How fast can I make that $12 profit? Because one of the things that's really attractive about books is the huge profit margins. But you only get the profit margins when the book sells. So you don't want to tie a bunch of capital up if you don't have to. That's my point. So if you buy a, a Gaylord for 100 or 200, let's say you buy 10 of them, and now you got that money tied up until you can get rid of all of them. And, and then you get to find a way to, you know, make money on those duds, you know? So how, how, do you, how do you make profit on those duds? Let's talk about that. The best way that we've found with our duds is to simply trade your duds into a bookstore for store credit. Odds are you have a chain bookstore near you that allows you to trade books in for store credit. And those books are the ones that you, those bookstores are the ones you really want to build relationships with. Because then you can make that a regular thing. And you can go in there and use that store credit and shop in the store, right? So let's say you buy that same Gaylord for 100. Well, now you have 900 books that are duds because only 100 are good. 10% acceptance rate is average, seven to 10%. Anything more, anything north of 10%, you're doing really well. But you have 900 books out of that one Gaylord box that you've got to take to that bookstore and trade in. So if you're going into a bulk operation, is that one bookstore going to be able to handle 900 books a week? Or let's say you do six Gaylords a week. Well, let's say you do three Gaylords a week. Are they able to handle 2,700 books every week? You want to make sure that they can. If they can't, then you want to make sure that you're only trading in the books to that bookstore that are going to yield you some sort of a profit and store credit that you can use to shop at that store. Let's talk about another way. Tax write-offs, right? So you can always donate your books using like the Salvation Army Thrift Saber Guide to any qualified charity and write off the fair market value. Now, you can't write off loss of inventory and a charitable contribution but you could do one or the other. So keep that in mind as well. As far as other places that you can monetize these books, well, let's say you have a lot of kids' books in the game world. You know, put five or 10 of them together and put them on eBay, sell them that way. People buy them all the time. And people don't realize this too. There are a ton of books that don't have dust jackets, but that people will buy just because they're blue or red or green. 
and they buy them for decoration. So you've got that as well. What else do you guys think, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going into a Gaylord operation, you're, you're buying bulk books, it's not necessarily how many books you get out of it that's going to make or break your profit. Because the better you're going to monetize the duds, the rejects that you can't sell on Amazon or eBay, that's where you're going to make your money. You know, and that's why it's, it's super, super sketch. You know, whenever you, whenever you come across somebody that wants to sell you a sorted Gaylord, you run the risk of buying somebody else's duds. You have to ask yourself, really, why aren't you selling them? If you're selling boxes of books like this and they're already pre-scanned, why aren't you selling them on eBay or Amazon? Why are you just selling me a box of books? And if they have a reasonable answer, then hey, maybe take a shot. But I would say two things. One, if you're going to buy a Gaylord off of somebody or a series of Gaylords, make sure that they have a good reputation within the community and make sure that they're not like pre-sorted, like pre-scanned their duds, you know? So how do you do that? Well, you can't, you can't always do that. If they have a good reputation, work with them. If they don't have a good reputation, don't work with them. But if they don't have a reputation because you don't know anybody that's used them before, now it's up to you. Running a business has inherent risks. You have to be able to experiment. This is the number one reason you want to like put all your money back into the business for the first six months so you have that working capital. So if you take a bad investment, it's not the end of your business. But do what you will, you know? I mean, people everywhere always looking to uh, go as fast as they possibly can before they know how to do it the right way. So you gotta crawl before you can walk. So just because you know how to stumble around doesn't mean you should start sprinting, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, that's all I have to say on bulk books, but I get this question all the time. So, hope that helps.